Hey, what's up, Internet? So, there's a new version of GNS3 version 1 beta 2. That came out rough. So, there's a new there's a new beta out for GNS3. And it has a nice new icon. You can kind of see down there. And with that was the release of a new GNS3 server. So, you can do your iOS on... Linux and do all the fun switching and some of the more advanced features that iOS on Linux supports. So I thought this would be a good time just to show how to set that up. I'm using VMware. The process is incredibly similar if you're using uh, VirtualBox. So you can download this GNS3 IOU VM from SourceForge. I'll try and put links in the description. So I'm going to double click on that, import it really quick. By the way, I haven't rehearsed this, so I'll probably screw something up while I'm showing this off. Um, and fair warning before you get through a good portion of this video, I am not going to show you where to get the license file from or how to get your hands on iOS on Linux. It's 2014. Use Google. So after we get the virtual machine imported. I'll just power it on really quick. I think it comes with a host only network. For my preference, I'm just going to put it to NAT because there's actually a NAT adapter with workstation that I can that I can connect to. So I'll do that. I'm actually going to restart it since I did that. Sorry everyone. So we'll let it boot up really quick. Okay, and I think it's root and Cisco if you want to log in, because I do want to log in. Do a quick IF config. It's 244.128 is the IP address that it ended up with. That's just fine. Um, this is a step that you might not get from other videos. We're going to modify a config file. This is, as the description says, to mitigate this particular error that you get in IOU. Um, slash IOL switches times. So sometimes you'll have a bunch of switches configured and you're testing out some spanning tree stuff or maybe you're not testing out any special spanning tree features but you just have switches in your environment and then out of nowhere you'll start getting this AMDP2 excess um, alert or error popping up on all of your switches and it's doesn't hinder you from doing anything. It's just super annoying. So uh, this helps to mitigate that. After I've entered this in and reboot it, um, the GNS3 server, I, I almost never see this error. So we're going to do that really quick. I'm just going to do nano. Enter this comp file. Scroll down. This would actually be way easier. See, this is why you rehearse stuff before you record. It's now like... This would actually be easier just if I SSH'd in. What did I say the IP address was? 244. Awesome. All right. It's 192.168.244.128. I'm going to log in as root. Cisco. All right. We're going to modify that config file. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Again, I'll, I'll add this into the description also. That way you don't have to try and copy it off my screen. There we go. And reboot. If you're feeling savvy, you can assign a static IP to your GNS3 server. I'm not going to do that in this video because I don't really care. We'll just make sure that it came back with the same IP address. See if we can SSH to it. We can. Cool. All right. So the next thing we have to do is we have to upload some images to our GNS3 server. To do that, we're going to open up a web page to 192.168.244.128 or whatever IP address your GNS server, GNS3 server boots up with. Port 8000 forward slash upload. Cool. Go to browse. Mine are in my Google Drive under GNS3 IOU. And I got some images here I can upload. So I'll upload. Which ones do I want to use? 
think that one. So we'll upload that. And we'll upload our layer three image. That one always takes a second. I would leave this page open because you're going to have to copy and paste these. All right, so we're set on the GNS3 server. We have our images uploaded. Now we're going to go into preferences under our GNS3 application here. I'll go to GNS3 server. You're going to click on remote servers. You're going to put the IP address of the server that you just booted up into host. So that's 192.168.244.128 for me. And I'll click add. And then I come down to iOS on Unix. And you have to select your license file. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to acquire a license file. I'm just going to tell you that you do need one. Very cool. Just going to apply that really quick. Now, IOU devices. And this is where you have to copy and paste. So I'm going to copy in my layer two image. And then initial config, GNS3 provides you with some of that. And I'm going to copy in my the path to my layer three image. Again, GNS3 provides you with the initial configs here, or base configs. I'll add that in. So now I have a layer two and a layer three image. And in theory, I should be able to drag in an IAU device. I'll do a switch and I'll grab a layer three image and use that as our router. I'm gonna configure them really quick. So we'll call you R1 and configure you. We'll call you switch one, no serial adapters and three ethernet adapters. By the way, the three Ethernet adapters, um, each Ethernet adapter it comes in as a module with four ports. So on a switch, if you did one Ethernet adapter, you'd end up with four ports on that switch. So you can see here, I did one Ethernet adapter and one serial adapter for my router. So I have four Ethernet ports and four serial ports. And then on here, I did three Ethernet adapters, so I have 12 ports on my switch. So I'll connect them really quick, and we'll make sure we can power them on. Didn't get any errors down here in the console, so you should be able to just double click and open them. Fantastic. Oh, don't know why I'm doing exclude on the sign. I wouldn't have any assigned interfaces. So we'll go into int zero, zero. We'll no shut that interface. We'll come on to R1 over here, which did not like the initial config provided by GNS3, but that's okay. Just give it a second. The cool part about doing iOS on Linux, they call it iOS on Unix, but obviously we're not running Unix here. The cool part about doing IOL though is uh, system resources are incredibly low on it. So you can run a fairly good sized topology and not run into the resource issues that you run into with uh, running standard GNS3 routers. Not to mention, you get some really cool features you can play with that aren't available on your standard GNS3 routers. Um, for instance, if you wanted to mess around with bidirectional forwarding detection, BFD, BFD uh, is super problematic to try and run on GNS3. I think the only platform that supports it is the 7200, and it will crash the 7200 image in GNS3 every single time. Um, Whereas on IOL, BFD works just fine. No issues. Cool, so we're connected to switch one. You can tell that this is a fully functional switch because we have access to VLANs up here. You can tweak some of your spanning tree to different modes like MST, PVST, which is the default, and rapid PVST or rapid spanning tree. So you get your different spanning tree modes, um, full access to ether channel, um, really, 
I don't know why I'm talking it up for you. You came to this video. You know why it's awesome. So here I am trying to sell you something. <laughs> but yeah, so that's setting up GNS3 Beta 2 with the new GNS3 server. Um, again, hop on Google, do some searches. It's not, in, you know, not impossible to find those images or your um, or your license file. And, I mean, if you're looking for image names, and I shouldn't even say this much, I mean, just pause the video. That's the name of the image file that you have to find. Um, finding the license file is a little bit uh, trickier, but definitely doable. So I hope this was helpful. Good luck setting up your GNS3 lab and having fun with IOL.